Joining me now, CNN political commentator and host of Firing Line on PBS, Margaret Hoover. Margaret, great to have you here with us. I have to confess, I've been a little surprised by these text messages that were released over the last few days. The amount of stuff that Meadows handed over, the amount of stuff in the hands of the committee. So this week has been not what I expected. Along those lines, what I truly did not expect was the reaction to Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell to all of these revelations yesterday. I want to play that for you. I do think we're all watching, as you are, what is unfolding on the House side. And it um, will be interesting to reveal all the uh, participants who were involved. We can it will be interesting to reveal all the participants who were involved. That sounds like as close as you're going to get to Mitch McConnell saying that he supports the January 6th committee and giving his imprimatur of approval of, of what they're doing, as though this had bipartisan support from the beginning. I just want to take another bite at that, because Mitch McConnell, you and I know, is more than willing to say nothing at any time or dodge any question on earth. But he leans in there. He says, I'm interested to learn something he, here. You know, look, on, on one level, it's, it's, it's not too little too late, because when the minority leader of the United States Senate, and by the way, his majority by not that many votes, essentially is affirming the work. I mean, what he is doing is he is affirming the work of the January 6th committee. I mean, it wasn't that long ago that he did not support the January 6th committee. Let's remember that there was a reason it didn't go anywhere in the United States Senate, and that is because of Mitch McConnell. Yes. That said, um, I think it's enormously important that he is, he is gently saying what they're producing is very important for the country because it does, it will help potentially, if he, if he stays the course, yes. mitigate the uproar on the right that will say that this is an invalid committee and this is a partisan action. I think, it's, I think you're right. Look, Mitch McConnell, he voted against conviction for the second impeachment. Mitch McConnell stood in the way of the bipartisan commission to investigate January 6th. But that same guy is saying right now, it, it's not nothing. I'm watching this. There is stuff coming out. So for any people who say this is nothing, Mitch McConnell doesn't agree. Even after his wife, I mean, you say he did all those things to block uh, the, the ultimate accountability for Trump even as his wife had resigned from Trump's cabinet because of January 6th. So Mitch McConnell has been on both sides of the argument here, but I'll take it. Right. I'll take it because we do, we do need a reliable accounting from the federal government of what happened on January 6th. Mm -hmm. And if Mitch McConnell's willing to say this is worthwhile, that helps. So Mitch McConnell's a little surprised by what's being revealed this week or is watching it closely. I am. You know who else may be a little surprised? Is Donald J. Trump. CNN's got reporting that Trump is annoyed with Meadows and feels blindsided by both his book and the material he's handed over. So Mark Meadows, stiff in the committee, but at the same time writes a book where he makes all kinds of revelations and also hands over all kinds of documents, and Trump's surprised. Trump's surprised. Apparently, Mark Meadows is surprised that Trump was upset by it. I mean, this is, this is a man who demands ultimate loyalty from everyone. Nobody knows that more than Mark Meadows, who sat by his side throughout January 6th. And one of the things we don't know is whether Mark Meadows actually took to heart the pleas from the incoming text messages from Donald Trump's son, from Laura Ingram, from Sean Hannity, and actually tried to make the case to Trump, or if he just did nothing at all. So there's still a, a lot we need to learn about Mark Meadows. But why would he be so surprised that the Trump, President Trump is displeased with the information he's shared? I, and I'm still trying to figure out what Meadows thought was going to happen. I don't see a clear strategy here. What did he think was going to happen when he wrote this stuff in the book? What did he think was going to happen when he did turn over this stuff to the committee? Look, we're not, I think in Mark Meadows, what we have seen throughout the course of his service to the president and the country is somebody who has uh, been kowtowed and cowed by where the power is and by who isn't deeply motivated by principle. So I think we're seeing the same flailing in the wind here. All right, you see principle. You say principle here, you bring up the word here, and that brings me to my next question here, which is that the former president, I guess, is doing this, uh, this paid audience tour with Bill O'Reilly where they answer questions from the crowd. I guess not sold out, by the way, <laughs> incidentally, but was asked about Mike Pence, his former vice president, and this is what Trump had to say about Mike Pence. I think, I think Mike has been very badly hurt by what took place with respect to January 6th. I think he's been, I think he's been mortally wounded, frankly, because I see the reaction he's getting from people. 
Trump says Pence has been mortally wounded by following the Constitution. After um, signs to hang Trump, Mike Pence were all over the Capitol, saying mortally wounded um, is, is not, a, not a coincidence. But I think it's enormously important to just remind ourselves that for as much as people on the left and on the right even um, may have been disappointed that Mike Pence went along and supported Donald Trump for so long. The reason we didn't have a constitutional crisis on January 6th was because Mike Pence upheld the precedent of the Electoral Count Act by proceeding forth with the counting of the electoral ballots. Mike Pence is one of the heroes of January 6th, whether you like it or not. And he was not only was he may have been politically mortally wounded by Donald Trump's base, but he did the right thing by history and by the Constitution of the United States. And we need to reinforce the Electoral Count Act so no vice president is ever put in that position again. I'll also say if Mike Pence thinks he can get back in Trump's good graces over the next couple of years, I'm not, I'm not so sure that there's a path. He's one who doesn't seem to be kowtowing and trying as much as the Mark Meadows is and the others of the world. He you know, was just in New Hampshire, as you know. He clearly thinks that there's a future for him. It's just not a future with Trump's base. Margaret Hoover, great to see you.